Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today I am here at base camp where I'm going to be sharing with you something kind of cool that I am going to be trying out over the next little bit. I decided to go ahead and open it up while I'm here at base camp to kind of get a good feel for it before I hit the road again. So today I'm going to be sharing with you something really neat that I picked up at a truck stop. Now I found this at a Love's truck stop and you can find it either there or on the Amazon link that I'm including below. But this is how I'm going to be starting to cook on those long stretches of highway going forward. I decided to pick up this, the Rode Pro portable stove, whenever I was at the truck stop. I got it for about $31 at the Loves whenever I was visiting. However, I've seen it retailed for anywhere between $31 and $45, depending on where you're going. You can see on here that it is a 12 volt compatible portable stove and that you can heat up to one quart in volume. The overall heat gets up to 300 degrees and it has a fused cord on it. So it looks like a little bitty lunchbox. As you can see right here, we can just pick it up and it takes up a very small amount of space inside the van. And then right inside this little area right here is actually where the cord is located. So we can pop this up and there it is right there. Now inside, again, it's like a little lunch box. So it has a heating plate on the actual bottom portion down here. And then this doesn't actually heat. It just maintains the heat that is like the ambient heat from the bottom. So this is kind of what we're working with right here with this Rode Pro stove. Before we get to trying this out on the back of the box, you'll notice a couple other things. You can warm or cook food in this. It gets up to 144 watts and it has a 15 amp fuse. So that's kind of some of the stuff that we need to know right there. And they do recommend using these little aluminum pans inside of it to have an easier cleanup. Otherwise things do get stuck to that bottom plate. So what does that mean? That means that now we're going to move inside of base camp and actually do some cooking. I'm really excited because this is going to enable me to do some things that previously I could not do. And I'll explain a little bit more of that as we go inside. But today we're going to be hooking up to both of my power stations. I do have a Jackery Explorer 1000 and also a Rock Pals 300. We're going to see how much power it pulls from each of those and then also how long it takes to cook the different dishes in those two different power stations using this the Rode Pro stove. I am so excited because I am a foodie. You've probably noticed by all the food videos, but now I'm going to be able to have a different way to cook while in my van, which is awesome. Now, one of the things that I saw about the Rode Pro stove here is that a lot of people use this little lunchbox style cooker to actually just heat up food. And so today I decided since that is one of the ways that people cook in it, that I was gonna try it out with something that I really enjoy. I love these little Zatarans meals. They're just a frozen pasta dish. And so I'm going to put this in and see how long it actually takes to cook in the Road Pro. Now I am going to be using the little aluminum pans, like again, are recommended. And so I'm just going to pour the pasta in and then set it inside, plug it in, and then we'll set a timer. Go ahead and poured it in and you'll notice that one of these little pans holds about half of one of these bags. So this is going to be a pretty hefty portion, but not the full portion size of the entire bag meal. Now we take it and just place it right inside. So here we go. Okay. And then I'm supposed to put a little bit of water in here also. Now I was recommended putting it directly into the pan by a person who has a trucking industry job who uses one of these. So let's see if that's enough. This is just supposed to keep it from burning. Then we close it up and then we're going to pop the top on it. This is hard to do with one hand. We're going to be using our Rock Pal 300 watt generator today. So we're gonna turn that on. Then we're gonna turn on right here and plug it in. The light has turned on, so now we're cooking. And just so that you know, over here on the Rock Pal, it's pulling approximately 78 watts. 
Okay, I did go ahead and set a 20 minute timer, which is what is recommended for a completely frozen meal. And you'll notice that the output is actually climbing. It's now at 107, oh my goodness. So as it's getting warmer, it's definitely drawing more. And we've dropped two percentage points on the rock pal. Now this is a 300 watt generator. So we're gonna see how this fares on a 20 minute cycle of using the little stove. Again, I wanted to test all of this out before I hit the road so I would know what to expect when using these. A lot of people do use this particular device when it's actually connected to their car or their vehicle and it's running. And that way they can be cooking while they're driving. But I also wanted to know what it would be like to use it while I'm at a campsite stationary. So that's why we're doing it this way. Okay, about 20 minutes has passed and we are down to 83%. So we've lost about 13% on the rock pals here cooking so far. So let's open it up and hope for the best to see what we're working with here. This is my first frozen meal to make in and it still looks pretty chilly in here. So 20 minutes, the bottom part is starting to cook nicely, okay. So we're gonna close it back up after we stir it and uh, see where we go from here. Yeah, that's actually starting to break down the little sauce pretty well. I may have added a little bit too much water, but that's okay. So uh, let's keep it cooking for another 20 minutes and see what we do. Now, just to let you guys know, my realistic expectation for a frozen meal is not the highest. I don't know what to expect. Typically, I don't use a lot of these anyway because when I travel, I do not have a dedicated freezer. However, being able to pick up one and then just hit the road would be kind of nice. So knowing kind of how long that's gonna actually take to cook is a big deal. So that's why I'm kind of doing this. And I'm gonna show you some other things also that I'm gonna be making just to kind of give a comparison. Again, this is just a piece of the kitchen that is helpful for whenever I am on one of those long travel days or if I'm stuck in a campsite for very long. So that's why I wanted to pick it up. But um, we're just gonna wait it out and see what happens. Another 20 minutes, another 13%. So I'm starting to see that for every 20 minutes that this is on, at least with the Rock Pals, it's going to take about 13%. So I'm also gonna be testing this with my Jackery just to kind of see how it goes with the 1000 watt so I can give you a comparison on a different recipe. But it is now time to open it up. And woo, I can definitely smell the garlic. Yes, okay, so this is actually cooking down pretty good. Again, I did put a little bit too much water. That is my own fault. So what I think I'm gonna do is add some mozzarella to this just to kind of absorb a little bit of that. But let's see, let's grab a noodle real quick. The noodles are cooking through pretty nicely, it looks like. Let's see how, ooh, look at that. That is actually done, I believe. Okay, a little mozzarella, never hurt anybody. No, it did not. So, uh, this is, this is what we're gonna do, I think. And I'll close it up for like 20 minutes and we'll see what happens, but I'm pretty pleased with this so far. Again, this is a frozen meal. We're gonna be actually cooking some other things as well in here, but um, let's close this up. Now, another reason why I wanted to do this while I'm here at base camp before I actually get into the van is so that I could test it out to see if it's going to get too hot. A lot of times whenever I am driving, I would want to probably put this in my floorboard and it doesn't appear that it's anything more than just a touch warm. So this would be safe for my van floorboard very easily. Of course, if I am traveling down the road, I would probably cover that little aluminum pan that I have in there. That way it would keep the heat locked in, but also keep messes from happening. I think that's just a smart thing to do. But all in all, this is working out super, super well. And I'm really excited to eat because now I'm hungry. Okay, it's all finished and I did put a little bit of Cajun seasoning on top, but I'm kind of happy with this. I'm just gonna turn it into a pasta soup as opposed to just like a pasta dish. And next time I will know, it's all about trial and error of knowing how much water to put in. And someone also, whenever I was in my little road po group on Facebook, just mentioned that in cases of frozen food, you can also add water to the bottom part and that will keep it 
moist, but where it also doesn't get like this. So we live, we learn, and we move on. Let's cook something else. The next thing that we're gonna try out in here is something I have never been able to make while traveling. This is a banana nut muffin mix. Typically, these mixes are a little bit big for my Ridge Monkey. So what we're gonna do is just add some milk in here. Now, something that it does say is that we're going to preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Well, guess what, guys? The Road Pro only goes up to 300 degrees, so we'll probably have to just cook it a little bit longer than the 14 to 16 minutes that it recommends. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up and we'll get started. This is gonna be delicious. I'm just getting some of the little lumps out. And then um, if I can make banana nut bread while I'm actually driving, oh my gosh, that will be epic. I mean, can you imagine you're on a road trip somewhere and then you pull over to like get gas, you open up your little cooker and then there is hot banana bread that's already ready for you. That's awesome. So yeah, we're just gonna pour this into the uh, aluminum and see how it goes. Just to give a comparison, we're going to plug this into the Jackery this time. The Jackery is charged up to 100%. So I'm going to turn on the DC and um, I'm going to plug this in, but this is a two-handed job. The light is on, so it is definitely pulling power now. And we're pulling about six watts, which is a lot different than before. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set a timer for about 10 minutes. Then we're going to come back over here and check it out. Now, I have noticed something that is different between the rock pal and the jackery on how things cycle on and off so that could be the reason why it's not pulling more or it could be that it's just getting started so it hasn't heated up enough to need more power yet not sure but we're going to keep watching it sure enough it was just heating up now it's at 73 74 watts right there so now it's cooking now imagine this i'm driving for like eight hours one day all I want to eat is something warm. Before that would have meant I have to pull down my back table, get my actual skillet out, cook something, clean everything up, and then hit the road again. Otherwise, I would have to go through like a drive through That's why I decided that I was gonna get this because of those days. Those days when I am driving forever and ever, and all I want is a warm meal and now this is an option. So as that's cooking, I'm going to be doing some other things, getting ready for our next adventure. And uh, we'll be back in, in 10 minutes. Okay, we've drained about 3% of the Jackery here and we're still going strong, but it is time to check this out. I did go ahead and let it run a little bit more than 10 minutes. It was closer to 15. Now remember the packet said that we needed it to be in here for 14 to 16. So I don't believe this is gonna be done yet, but we'll check. Nope, but I can see that around the edges, it is starting to set up and it is definitely getting thicker because it is filling more of the pan. So we're gonna close this back up and set our clock for another 15 minutes and then check it out. Now, another little tidbit. Again, I was checking out some different YouTube videos from some 12 volt cooking channels, and then also some fellow van lifers who do have this device. And most of them were very similar in their advice. They said, if a recipe says 14 to 16 minutes, bet on it being 30 to 35 minutes. But this isn't gonna be time lost again. This is gonna be driving time that we're already in the van, so it works. Okay, let's check it out. It's been in there for a little while. We've lost 7% of the overall Jackery Explorer 1000, and it's been running at a pretty consistent, no more than 75 watts for a little bit. So after it gets heated up, it regulates, definitely. Now, here we go into the Road Pro. I will say this, it is warm right now, but not hot to the touch. So it definitely seems to be holding that heat. Ooh. And this is bubbling, but you can see like right here, it's starting to get very firm. In fact, it, it's getting close. It's, it's very close. So maybe another 10 minutes. And that my friends is why we're trying this out at base camp first. I would much rather do that here while I can kind of keep an eye on it 
rather than just throwing something in and hitting the road and having no idea as to how long it's really gonna take to cook. So, <laughs> definitely a trial and error thing. And if you do end up picking one of these up also, I encourage you to do the same. We're gonna be cooking a couple other dishes in here over the next couple of days and I'll be sharing those with you. I don't know that we'll necessarily check on it together every 10 or 15 minutes, but I'll definitely show you what I made and tell you how long it took. So let's, uh, about 10, 15 more minutes on that and then we'll cut into it. Okay, let's do a little toothpick test here. It is done. This is super done. Now, I will say this, again, we don't get browning on the top. So this is kind of what it looks like. And because of the way that I mixed it, I do have some little bubbles on top, but this is gonna be delicious. And I think I'm just gonna cut into it and have peace. Okay, this is what it looks like. And this is pretty yummy. Now, I didn't oil the pan or spray it or anything, and I probably should have, but the bottom got nice and brown. You can see this has little nuts in it and this is what the top looks like. And this is a super moist piece of banana nut bread. So this is a definite win for van life, this thing right here. Oh yeah. looking good now I am a huge fan of cooked Brussels in balsamic and there's one last step these have been in for about 35 minutes so now that they have cooked down to a nice consistency I'm gonna put just a little Parmesan in here to finish them off And I'll let that cook for about 10 minutes. So all together, we're looking at about 45 minutes and these are going to be so good. I didn't add any water to these or anything like that. So yeah, this is just one of the many things that we can cook now in the Road Pro. Okay, the final product. Ooh, look at this, it's... Ooh, this just smells so good. If I could put the smell through the camera right now, wow. This makes me a happy, happy bunny right now. This is one of my favorite dishes that I always cook in the oven. And I haven't been able to make them in my van, but now I can. Now that we've made a couple of dishes, what did you think about the Rode Pro portable stove? Just curious. Do you think that this is something that you would be interested in? If so, leave a comment below. Let me know if you have one already, what you're cooking in it, all sorts of things like that. And uh, I personally think this is gonna be great. I think it's gonna be the perfect size for me to pull up to the front seat, hook into the 12 volt, cook up something delicious, and make the most of those long, boring drives that otherwise I would be eating like a sandwich or some fast food on. It's kind of nice to be able to have something that is like this now where I can cook breads, brownies, even cookie dough if I want to, and uh, not have to worry about too much cleanup because I can use an aluminum pan. I mean, look at it though. It's just so compact. This is going to be absolutely perfect and the right size for my tiny little van. If you have enjoyed coming along for the adventure today and learning some of the neat things that we can cook in the Road Pro portable stove, then make sure that you leave a like on this video, hit the subscribe, and again, tell me those recipes because me and Dimples are about to hit the road, and whenever we do, we're going to be cooking up a storm. Till next time, guys.